Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at food miles and carbon footprints. This is part of paper two, unit C, the challenge of resource management. In the UK, we import around 45% of our food. This leads to an increase in food miles and an increase in the carbon footprint of what's on our plates. The distance that your food travels from field to fork is known as food miles and the greater these are, then the bigger the impact on the planet. Bananas coming from the Caribbean are travelling 5,500 kilometres to reach us. Spanish strawberries, 1,600 kilometres. Blueberries from the USA, just over 3,000 kilometres. South African apples, 9,700 kilometres. And New Zealand lamb travels all the way over covering 18,800 kilometres. The food miles covered by the food imported into the UK each year is over 30 billion kilometres. Food is transported into the UK on aeroplanes and container ships and will also travel via train or lorry beforehand and on arrival to the UK to get wherever it is being sold. Food miles lead to a large carbon footprint. This is the CO2 emissions given off during commercial cultivation and transporting produce. The most obvious factor would be transportation, so we would expect the produce which has travelled the most miles to have the highest carbon footprint. But it's not quite as simple as that, as we also need to think about the energy that has gone into growing and processing the food in the first place such as the farm machinery used to harvest the crops out in the field, or the artificial heat and light that may have been used in greenhouses. In some cases, importing food actually lowers the carbon footprint of a food product. For example, when we grow tomatoes in the UK, we have to use heated greenhouses, whereas in Spain and Italy, the climate means that they can just grow outside. So even when we factor in transport across the English Channel, the carbon footprint is still lower i.e. the emissions given off by heating in greenhouses is higher than the emissions given off by transporting the tomatoes to the UK. We also need to consider how goods are being transported. Using planes to transport foods emits much more carbon dioxide than using container ships. So those bananas that have travelled 5,500 kilometres across the Atlantic Ocean have a much lower carbon footprint than the strawberries that have been flown 1,600 kilometres from Spain, despite it being less than a third of the distance. However, we do need to use plane transportation as it is much quicker and some perishable foodstuffs wouldn't last the time it takes them to be transported overseas using ships. So how can we reduce our food-related carbon footprint? The simplest way is to reduce our imports, which would also improve our food security as we would be less reliant on other countries. But in practical terms, there are lots of things that we could do. So we could choose to eat seasonal fruit and vegetables grown in the UK, like we used to. We could choose to eat locally produced food, such as that found at a farmer's market. Goods sold at farmers markets have to be grown or produced within a certain distance, so the food miles are low. We could limit what we import, i.e. only goods that we can't actually grow or produce in the UK. We can make better use of labelling to show exactly where our food has come from to enable shoppers to make informed choices about what they buy. This already happens in many pubs and restaurants who state exactly which farm their meat has come from. We could stock only British produced meat in supermarkets. For example, the co-op already does this. And we can make better use of schemes such as the Red Tractor Scheme, where products with the Red Tractor logo are British produce, which can be traced right back through the supply chain to the British farms they came from. The other benefit of this is that they also ensure higher standards of animal welfare, which is a really important additional bonus. Finally, we could grow our own food, either in our gardens or on an allotment. This has become increasingly popular in the UK, with around a third of UK households growing some sort of produce, and is evident in the enormous waiting list for allotments up and down the country. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on food miles and carbon footprints. Thank you for watching.